Are you curious about what's holding you back on your wealth building journey? Do you want to break free from financial struggle? Are you looking to accelerate your journey towards achieving financial freedom? Or simply do you want to design and live your life on your own terms? If so, then today's 18 tips from the psychology of money are definitely for you. The book explores the emotional relationship with money and the psychological factors influencing financial decisions and behaviors. These tips will help you cultivate a healthier money mindset and achieve long-term financial success. One overarching theme in this book is that doing well with money has little to do with intelligence and a lot more to do with behavior. Most people can achieve high degrees of financial success by mastering a few behavioral skills that have little to do with any formal measure of financial expertise. Number one is to differentiate between luck and risk. Nothing is as good or bad as it seems. We tend to focus on stories of successful individuals, but often overlook the role of luck. Consider the case of Bill Gates, who was one of the rare high school students in the US to be able to attend a high school with a computer. Only one in a million high school students of his age had that possibility. Can we even begin to explain his remarkable success without factoring in this incredibly lucky circumstance? Beware of outliers. Extreme outcomes often involve extreme luck or risk, making them very hard to replicate. When it comes to business and investing, focus on general trends and patterns, not on individuals. Number two is to recognize that nobody is crazy. People just face incredibly different experiences with money, which shape their perspectives and decisions. And what people experience is far more compelling than what they learn secondhand. Consider the following graph. If you were born in the 1960s in the US, inflation during your impressionable teens and 20s would have sent prices up threefold. Later in life, this generation would have been more likely to invest their money in stocks and less in bonds, compared to someone, for example, that was born in the 1990s. The same holds true when we consider different backgrounds, parents, values, or for different incomes, incentives, and regions of the world. Everyone has different attitudes and relationships with money and different mental models that result from these vastly different experiences. Nobody's crazy, so don't be so quick to judge. What seems crazy to some is perfectly rational to others. Number three is to identify what is enough for you. The hardest financial skill is getting the goalposts to stop moving. Humans are wired to strive for more, more money, more power, more prestige. But if happiness is expectations minus results, we need to find a way to stop the goalposts from moving. Unfortunately, our expectations today are heavily influenced by social comparisons in an online, hyper-connected world. Learn what is enough for you and stick to it. Avoid engaging in social comparisons and stop the goalposts from moving. Number four is to never underestimate the power of compounding. And this is truly amazing. At the time of the book's publishing, 96% of Warren Buffett's net worth had come after his 65th birthday. Let that sink in for a second. There are thousands of articles, books, videos, praising Warren Buffett for his investing genius, but nearly none focusing on the most important factor explaining his overall absolute success, time in the market. The key takeaway here is that good investing is about earning pretty good returns for a very long period of time to allow for compounding to do the heavy lifting. Number five is to remember that staying wealthy is a different game than getting wealthy. Earning money and keeping money require two very different set of skills. Earning money requires taking risks, being optimistic, and being brave, while keeping money requires a certain degree of humility and even fear that you may lose it. Staying wealthy requires a survivor mentality and the ability to stick around for a long time without making major mistakes to be able to fully benefit from the power of compounding. Number six is to recognize the importance of tail events. A small number of events typically account for the vast majority of outcomes. Many things in business and investing work in this way. Consider that since 1980, only 7% of the stocks of the Russell 3000 index accounted for the overall returns. The other 93% had little to no impact or even had negative returns. Remember, tails drive everything in investing. It is incredibly challenging to identify the needles in the haystack, that 7% or so that may drive stock market returns over the next 30 years. Do you even have the time and resources to study the haystack of 3,000 listed companies? For the vast majority of retail investors, investing in internationally diversified, low-cost index funds is the smarter bet. Number seven is on the importance of buying your freedom. Money's greatest intrinsic value is the ability to give you control over your time. If there's a common denominator in happiness, it's that people want to have control over their own lives. Even for those who enjoy their job or the sector they are in, they may dislike working on someone else's terms. 
Despite the US being the richest country in history, there is little evidence that their citizens are becoming happier. According to Housel, that is in part because we have given up more and more control over our time. Remember, gaining control over your time is the highest dividend that money can pay. Number eight is to remember the man in the car paradox. They're looking at your car, not at you. People want wealth to signal respect and admiration, but this usually just doesn't work. Think about it. When someone drives past in their fancy car, bypassers may take a hard look at the Ferrari, at the gadget, but mostly ignore the person. Most are just daydreaming about what it would be like for them to drive the Ferrari. Buying fancy objects for respect is ineffective. Humility, kindness, and empathy are better ways to earn respect, and obviously they're free. Remember, no one's impressed by your positions as much as you are. Number nine is to recognize that generally, wealth is what you don't see. Spending money to show others how much money you have is actually the fastest way to lose money. We tend to judge wealth by what we see because that is all the information that's in front of us. A nice home, a fancy car, an exotic holiday, we don't have access to their bank statements or to their retirement portfolio. This is a terrible way to make inferences on wealth. Wealth in reality is what you don't see. It's the fancy cars not purchased. It's the watches not worn. It's the diamonds not bought. True wealth comes when you don't spend the money and is what buys you freedom and flexibility. For most, acquiring true wealth requires being okay with not looking rich. Do you prefer to look rich or to be wealthy? So what's it going to be? Are you seeking status and peer approval or do you want to gain freedom that is generated by the wealth that is not externally visible? Number 10 is to keep calm and focus on saving money. Your savings rate is more important for building wealth than your income or investment returns. Adopting a frugal mindset and learning to be happy with less is within our control and leads to wealth and financial safety. The book defines savings as the difference between your income and your ego. Let that sink in for a second. You may then realize why so many people with high incomes fail to save enough money. Number 11 is to internalize that being reasonable works better than being coldly rational. When it comes to financial decisions, aiming to be pretty reasonable is often more realistic and has better outcomes than being coldly rational. Rather than trying to find a mathematically optimal investment strategy, try to maximize instead for how well you sleep at night. Number 12 is to expect surprises along the way. Recognize that the world is a very unpredictable place and that history is full of surprising events. The majority of what is happening in the global economy at any given moment can be tied back to a handful of past events that were impossible to predict. While it's certainly useful to have a good understanding of the past, don't rely on it too strongly. You may miss out on the outlier events that move the needle most in the future. Number 13 is to leave some room for error. Adopting a margin of safety is an effective strategy to navigate a world that is driven by odds and subject to surprises. What we generally want is to pursue strategies where we are happy with a wide range of potential outcomes. Implementing a margin of safety can come in numerous forms. One example could be to adopt a frugal budget and to live well beneath your means. This may mean that you are more in a better situation to weather unexpected events, a job loss, a reduced salary, lower than expected returns. You should definitely avoid any plan that's too rigid in its assumptions. For example, my plan only works if I receive the historic average of the market, or my plan only works if I'm continuously employed throughout the entire timeline of the plan. Remember, you should aim to be happy with a wide range of outcomes, so be careful with setting the assumptions underlying your plan. Number 14 is to remember the end of history illusion. Long-term planning is difficult because people change over time and so do their goals and desires. I've certainly changed over the last 10 years. I think differently. My view of how the world works has slowly changed over time. Even what I expect from my career has changed. Remember the end of history illusion, which is what psychologists call the tendency for people to be very aware of how much they changed in the past, but to underestimate how much their personalities, their desires and goals will continue to change in the future. Morgan Housel recommends minimizing regret by adopting a moderate mindset and avoiding extreme financial commitments. Number 15 is very important and it's to remember that nothing is free. Remember that successful investing always demands a price. However, most financial costs don't have visible price tags. Their currency is not dollars, but it's volatility, it's fear, it's doubt, uncertainty and regret. Consider that Netflix returned more than 35,000% between 2002 and 2018, but traded below its previous all-time high on 94% of days. What does this mean? Well, if you were holding Netflix, you were sure to experience a very bumpy ride. Whether you're a value stock investor or a passive index fund investor, 
you're going to experience some serious volatility and uncertainty throughout your investment journey, which it sometimes will be very, very difficult to stomach. Household reminds us that this is the price that we should all willingly pay. Many investors will try shortcuts to avoid paying the price. Some of them will try to chase easy returns or perhaps will try to time the market. Unfortunately for them, there is no free lunch when it comes to investing and those who avoided paying the price may end up paying double. Number 16 is to ask yourself, which game are you playing? Recognize that there are different types of investors playing very different games. With different goals and time horizons, prices that look ridiculous to one investor can make perfect sense to another. Why? Because the factors that they're paying attention to are very, very different. The important takeaway here is to understand at a deep level what is your investment strategy and time horizon. So you're less at risk at being persuaded by other investors playing very different games. For example, I'm mostly a long-term index fund investor. The latest startups IPO? No thanks. The newest cryptocurrency that just came out? No thanks. Kathy Wood's latest innovation world-changing ETF? No thanks. Number 17 is to remember that pessimism is attractive. Pessimism sounds like someone's trying to help you, while optimism sounds like a sales pitch. However, recognize that optimism is actually our very best bet when it comes to investing because the world tends to get better for most people most of the time. Remember that media will often promote pessimism to keep you engaged, to keep you glued to the TV. Over long periods of time though, the stock market only goes up. Follow the media too closely and you'll always have a sense of worry and urgency. Remember, pessimism is their business. It's not their business to have sincere concerns for your retirement portfolio. Number 18 is to be careful with what you believe. Acknowledge that the more you want something to be true, the more likely you are to believe it, even if it's not accurate. Consider that 85% of mutual funds underperformed their benchmark over the 10 years ending in 2018. Does an industry with such poor track record go out of business? The reality is completely the opposite. There are trillions of dollars in these funds and no shortage of people willing to hand over their life savings to active funds charging very high fees. As mentioned earlier, a lot of people want to avoid paying the price of volatility and doubt and unfortunately will follow misleading marketing that a lot of these actively managed funds are selling. If these insights resonated with you and you're motivated on your investment journey, check out our latest video on the importance of reaching your first 100K invested on your road to achieving financial freedom. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's content. Take care, see you in the comments below and or in the next video.